in most of our teaching we're dealing with doctrine but we felt that in this special uh, session that we should uh, deal with the problems of life uh, doctrines are good you have to know them but if you got problems even the doctrine don't work and so in this special series we are dealing with problems and I would advise you to get uh, to get to get both of these uh, uh, volumes and also we have even others more than it, that's in these two volumes that you can get by audio tape or videotape either and study the issues of life and you can you can evade pitfalls by knowing they're there uh, you would uh, if you knew what board it was you'd never get bored you know uh, and and so let each one of us uh, discover what God wants us to be and be what God wants us to be successfully and all the people said now in our present lesson that we're involved in how do you cope with boredom well the I guess the first thing is you have to find out whether you're bored or not you know some people have problems and don't know it and they're they're the hardest to help you can't help a fellow if he don't know he needs help you know uh, if a fellow's swimming like a fish and you say hey are you want me to throw you a life a life buoy and he says well no I'm swimming uh, well he don't need your help but if he if he stops swimming and starts sinking and you throw him one then he has to have one if he's going to survive so we're talking to those that want to survive how do you how do you cope with boredom uh, humankind are born extroverts uh, I think we should nail a little peg down there and hold it real tight uh, we're not born bored <laughs> no sir no human is born bored you get that way you get yourself that way you are to blame for being that way and so don't go picking on somebody else if you're bored uh, it's because you're not seeing life properly uh, a newborn child uh, instantly within a few seconds after birth begins to yell like he was at a Cubs football game and if he doesn't they drop him in the garbage because it's all over you know and and so the human person is born with a lot of noise and I think God wants to uh, keep him that way all the days of his life when you sit in a the corner there's something wrong uh, it, it's when we're enjoying life that something's right our children are naturally inquisitive I've forgotten how many new things a child learns every day. It, sometimes it's actually thousands that they learn in one day. Just learn, learn, learn. Uh, <clears throat> in those beginning years, it's the mothers that are the teachers, and it almost runs them crazy. Who made the moon? Why? <laughs> how big is the sun? Why? <laughs> And Mama says, would you just sit down for a little bit, please? <laughs> Where is God? Why? <laughs> They're naturally inquisitive. Children are learners. Now, that, that's the normal norm for a human person, you know, that he learns. And that he becomes really excited about life. If every day you train yourself to love somebody that day, to learn something that day you will never be bored it's when you stop loving and learning that you become bored and, and God doesn't want it God is not bored he God has never been bored he just makes a few million more stars anytime he has a, some spare moments and so God is not bored to lose interest in your surroundings and your family in your work then you become bored that's what they call it the psalmist said in Psalm 42 and 5 King David said these words why are you cast down O my soul now here was a man analyzing which is a very correct thing to do in fact if we would analyze ourselves we wouldn't need analyzing by somebody else here was a man named David and in his spirit inside of him he began to address his soul he said David 
soul. Now your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And that's where boredom comes from. Boredom does not come from your spirit part of you. No person with a Holy Spirit in them should ever be bored. Or you've lost the spirit if you, if you get bored. And, and, you have, uh, and, and you have the Holy Spirit within you. So he said, David, mind, emotions, and will, why are you cast down? At his, that was his solical parts. Why are you cast down? And then he said, why are you disquieted in me? It was me talking to me. And if me would preach to me more, you wouldn't have to preach to you more. Why are you cast down, David? Why are you disquieted in me? Upset and, and nervous, and, you see. Hope in God. Man, he had already found the source. Hope in God. And he got the victory. And he said, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. He had found a source. I will praise him for the blessing of his countenance, his presence, his anointing, and his blessing. The word boredom that we have in the English language comes just from a couple of sources, and I presume you could find it in many other uh, languages, too, coming to us. But in the French, the word is anu. And you go further back than that into the Latin, and it's ennui. And the word means a lack of interest. A bored person is a person who has lost interest in what he one time had interest in. A bored person is one that did have interest, but now does not have interest. He has lost interest. Boredom means uninterested. Just count me out. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Boredom means dullness. Now, these are out of the dictionary, by the way. I didn't cook these up. These are out of the dictionary. This is what the dictionary says boredom means, dullness. I don't believe there's anybody who lacks dullness in anybody else. You don't mind being dull yourself, but man, you can't stand it if somebody else has got it. <laughs> boredom is dullness. And dullness means you don't have a sharp edge. Are you here? Dullness means you have lost your luster. You're no longer shining bright. That's what dullness means. Boredom means monotonous. It means two plus two is four. Two plus two is four. Two plus two is four! And you're mad at it for being four. Well, it can't be five, because it's only four. And that's what you call being monotonous. And you become bored, because it's over and over again, like an old record that's broken, just over and over again. You can always change the record. And if your child asks you the same question 40 times, put another question in his mind. Say, did you ever count your toes? Well, sit over there and count them. You might have left them and don't know it. Yeah, anyway, there's a way to break monotony. And you don't have to go through life saying, life is monotonous to me. You hadn't climbed another hill. Amen. So you look down at another valley and see something new down there that you hadn't seen before. Amen. What is boredom? Your dictionary says a state of unhappiness. That boredom is a state of unhappiness. So when you say, I am, un I am bored, then you're also saying, I am unhappy. Now, you wouldn't confess that, of course. You say, oh, yes, I'm happy, but I'm bored. You can't be bored and happy, too. They don't sleep in the same crib. So if you are bored, you are unhappy. If you don't like what you're doing, you're unhappy. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, when things get monotonous with you, all God's telling you to do is climb up another notch on the ladder and do something bigger. He's talking about growth, you know. 
And, and so if you get it into the right element, you can turn that thing around and, and make it work in, you know, in your behalf. If you're bored with what you're doing, do something bigger, better, and it'll work. What is boredom? Your, your dictionary says it's being annoyed. None of this stuff seems good to me. It's a little negative. Well, boredom is negative, though. When you're bored, you are negative. Annoyed. So bored means that you're not only tired of what you're doing, you're mad at it. Annoyed. Boredom means a state of annoyance. You are annoyed at it. It's been too much of the same too long. And you can't stand it any longer. And you're what you call bored to death. <laughs> Whatever that means. The dictionary says it's to become annoyed at what you're doing, how you're living. What is boredom? Your dictionary says it's weariness. You're tired of it. I'm just tired of the same old thing. I'm tired for biscuits for breakfast. Well, have some toast. Came out of the same field, but they prepared it different. Variety. So, so to become bored means weariness. You're just tired of being tired of being tired. What is boredom? Your dictionary says it's inactivity. That'll get you. You ain't doing much. When you get bored, <laughs> you stop the movements. You stop the progress. And you're not, you're not at your best. Boredom is an empty, aimless feeling on the inside of you. I, I missed the dictionary on that. I just told you something. I want to tell you there are millions of Americans that are bored. There are a lot of people that have a lot of wealth and they don't know what to do and they're bored with life. Every suicide in the world is a state of boredom. If they'd have had something to do besides kill themselves, they'd have been out there doing it. Suicide is the stupidest thing that any stupid idiot ever did. And it's the shortest cut to hell that you could ever find because you have committed murder. I take my life if I want to. You won't do any such thing. And suicide is a spirit. It's a demon talking into your ear. And he talks into every human being on the face of the earth. He didn't just select you. And if you're going to listen to him, he'll take you to the wrong place where he's going to spend eternity. But when you are full of God and full of love and full of blessing, you want to live forever and bless everybody you can. So boredom is an empty and aimless feeling. You ain't going anywhere and you're empty when you got there. So all you got to do is put something inside so you won't be empty and go in the right direction so you know where you're going. And you won't ever be bored. You won't ever be bored. You say, Brother Summerall, don't you ever get bored? I don't know what the word means. I haven't been bored my whole life. I've been learning something every hour of my life, I guess. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I don't have more than 50 manuscripts, about 20 to 30 percent finished. And it just makes me upset that I can't get those things finished. And I may never get them finished, you know. But I sure can't get bored. I can grab one and start working on it. Say, ooh, wish I'd have done this before. I'm late on this one. Did you know I've been working on a book on the word love for about four years? How many wish I'd go ahead and finish it? Well, I do too, but I'm doing something else all the time. Such as talking on boredom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boredom is an empty and aimless feeling and it's associated with problems without solutions. I was thinking today, really in relation to my, to my three sons and myself, that, that if we're not careful, we will let things this size 
use up all of our time when the things this size need our attention. I think that's could create boredom. If you're going to keep working on the small things, the big things don't have a chance. You don't ever work on them. And the devil would like for us to always be working on the nitty gritty and never get up there where the big decisions are made that create success. You say, but how about the small things? Well, they'll always be there. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always, and the little ones are the poor ones. And if you're going to have them always, forget it and go ahead and do something bigger than that. Are you here? Amen. Boredom is an empty and aimless feeling associated with problems without solutions. So you might as well start doing something you've got a solution for. Who is bored? Actually, boredom is a disease of modern life. The primitive man knew nothing about it at all. I think most of you had to be told that you were bored before you found out what the word meant. When you live among primitive people, you find that they're very active. I lived among them. Never heard of one of them that was bored. They enjoy living. Primitive people enjoy living. And they're not bored. It's on the affluent that are bored. You got more than you ought to have. You don't know how to appreciate it, so you get bored about it. Amen. I've heard people say, I am bored to tears, whatever that means. <laughs> they don't like their present surroundings, they're going to cry about it. Well, why don't you, rather than crying, just change them. It'd be a lot easier. Someone else says, he just bores me to death. Whatever that means. And somebody is very distasteful in your presence and you'd rather get out of your presence. Of course, they might say, think the same about you. You can't tell. <laughs> Boredom attacks old people who think they're not necessary. Boredom attacks young people who don't feel that they're going anywhere. Boredom attacks executives builders or it attacks housewives and factory workers it attacks ministers boredom does doctors lawyers industrialists that little devil called boredom he's on the job you know if you let him talk to you he'll get you in the same mess he's in he's bored too what causes boredom to come to you you feel just bored. You can't stand your surroundings. It results when the challenge of life is lost. When you've got a challenge boiling inside of you, boiling, you don't get bored. So the challenge of life has to be lost. You feel like you've made it. As long as there's a challenge to do something more, you can't get bored because you're creating and creativity doesn't know what boredom means. A person finds himself without goals and he gets bored. He has nothing up there he's reaching for, grabbing for, working on, and he gets bored. Boredom comes from not relating to challenge and not relating a local environment. You just don't relate to it and say, I'm bored with this environment. You don't have to be. It could be a challenge to you. When we don't adjust rightly, it's related to selfishness. And selfishness creates boredom. I hope you caught that last sentence, please. Boredom and selfishness go together. And it's selfish people who are bored. They're all wrapped up in their own little cocoon. And they get bored with anybody, everybody. And so they don't relate properly to it. Boredom is born when the joy of achievement is missing. Isn't that something? Boredom comes into being when the joy of achievement when your little boy walks in the house and shows you something he's made, 
He is excited. He is not bored. The children in our school displayed their science achievements this week. They used the whole of the hall of the Eastburn, Eastburn Auditorium to, uh, to uh, show, show it off. And those little fellows about this big made volcanoes that exploded for you. Yeah, they did. And they were excited about it. They made all kinds of things themselves. They made mechanisms that went around and around. And they wanted to explain to you how it went around, you see. And they made them themselves. And they were not bored at all. Their mom and papa might have been bored looking at it. So boredom is when we have lost the joy of achievement and there's no excitement left. It comes when there is a need for direct leadership inside of us. So we have to rise up and say, hey, I'm going to put some direction in my life. And you can do it so easy. You can go next door and, and, and visit with somebody. Or, or you can go down the street and do a little something for someone. You can take a piece of your your, your, your birthday cake and give it to a neighbor across the street. And you would just be amazed at how good you feel about it. You just don't have to do nothing. And you just don't have to go around saying you're bored. You can always find joy in living. And God wants you to find joy in living. How many believe that? What would this thing called boredom, how will it affect you? I, I, I guess... Number one, you can say, how does it affect other people? It don't matter if it's part of your family. If you're bored, nobody wants you around. You're a nuisance. Are you here? Yeah, you're not a big shot. And being bored doesn't show sophistication. It only shows that you're not relating to circumstances that are there with you. And, and so uh, this thing called boredom, you're not only bored, but they are bored with your board, you see. And, and, and so uh, you don't relate, you don't relate to others uh, when you're bored. What will boredom do for you personally? Number one, it will separate you from good friends. You tell good friends that you're bored when you're in their presence and they will avoid you and stay out of your way. It will keep you from many pleasures that you could enjoy, real pleasures that you could enjoy. And, and you can't enjoy them, you're too bored to enjoy anything. And, and so that's what it'll do for your, for your own life. B boredom, maybe this is the strongest thing that I can say in this lesson. Boredom will push you down the road to depression. And that's a sad state to get into, to be depressed. Be sad when you go to bed and wake up sad too. That's a, that's a sad state to be in. So boredom creates and causes sadness. It's a part of the sadness system. It causes, it causes action of any kind of every kind to cease and you become a non-productive person. And so boredom hurts you. You say, well, what can I do about it? I feel bored. Number one, Discover Jesus and discover excitement. Nobody who just discovered Jesus has ever been bored. I can never forget that down in the old South Bend Gospel Tabernacle when we first came to the city, that a man came in off the street and he got saved, gave his heart to the Lord, and while kneeling on the altar, he got happy, and he began to say, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> and I looked around, I didn't see anybody giving him any food, and I leaned over, and I said, what, what are you saying? He says, hot dog. Well, I said, well, what do you mean? Oh, he says, I am really happy. Well, I said, then say praise the Lord. <laughs> That'll be a little better than hot dog. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. He was so excited. <laughs> and you get, you get enough excitement inside of you, you won't be bored, I can tell you that. Amen. You say, what can I do if I have boredom? Number one is, is discover it and then discover some excitement. Number two is love someone 
who need you. Reach out a hand to someone. Brother, that'll take care of it. I can remember I used to sit in my office here or down at the other church and I, I just get tired of working, you know, on sermons. And I just felt weary all over. And I'd get up out of that chair and get in my car and drive over the hospitals and visit eight or ten people and feel ten years younger. It would be amazing how I went in to bless somebody else. I got the blessing. Yeah. I thought I was blessing them and I came out with it myself. You see? Came back and was ready to go to work again, mind you. Ready to go to work again by blessing someone else. Reach out a hand to help somebody. Achieve a new goal in life. You won't be bored then. Achieve a new goal in life. Permit Christ to change and to bless your life. Like in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life, that you may have it abundantly and more abundantly. Consider the rewards of victory. Philippians 3, 13, brethren, I count not myself too apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forward to those things which are which are before me, reaching out, reaching out before. Then he says in verse 14, I press toward the mark. I press for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You can defeat boredom by being a winner. <laughs> by being a winner. By, by rejoicing, we can, we can defeat boredom.